give up. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever and ever and ever and ever. Up. Right now he's Roba doing Terry Funk in a violent elbow. Sends him right out of the ring. Welcome to the latest installment of the HighSpots.com shoot interview series. Here today talking the date is August 20th, 2005, as part of the NWA Legends Fan Fest Convention here in Charlotte, North Carolina, and we are here to talk with one of the most infamous tag teams in Jim Crockett Promotions run, Bill and Randy Mulkey. Uh, guys, first question, how'd you get started in the business? <laughs> Setting up the ring. For whom? For Harsh Strickland, and uh, I used to keep it set up in a cattle barn at the fairground at the Anderson uh, County Fairground. Used to be the IWA, Harsh Strickland. He, he's a legend himself, you know. Uh, is uh, trying to think everything. The Infernos and, and the, the infer one of the Infernos, and also one of the first assassins too, I believe. Right. And everything. Um, work us up to to your involvement with Jim Crockett Promotions. Uh, how'd you get in there? Uh, training, things of that nature. What got you to Jim Crockett Promotions? Well, I went to. Uh, it was Georgia Championship Wrestling. I was uh, 16 years old. Went over with a couple of guys. I'd done about three shows. I wrestled uh, uh, Don Malenko, which was Dr. X, under the mask back then. And uh, they found out I was 16 years old and tried to get my parents to release me. Rip Hawk was the uh, booker at the time. And they wouldn't release me at that time to, uh, to come back. So once I turned 18, I made another phone call. Went over three weeks later, then there we was, you know. Uh, I was booked for the first Saturday, and he went up. He just got out of his car wreck with a broke hip and broke shoulder and all, and they needed an extra guy. So he ended up wrestling one guy. I ended up wrestling another guy. And, and everything fell in place within three weeks. Uh, they had us on Carolina TV, and then next day we knew we were doing house shows. As a matter of fact, I remember that day quite fairly because it scared the hound out of me because I just got out of a car accident, hip, busted hip, shoulder, ankle, uh, chin, nose, the whole nine yards, and they come and say, hey, we need somebody extra and everything, and I said, <laughs> you got to be kidding me. And uh, Christian, Christian, yeah, Barry, uh, caught me and he said, put your clothes on, come on out, be smooth sailing. Went just like that. That time on, we was we was on history. What time frame would this be? Like eighty five ish? Uh, it was right around eighty three, eighty four. Yes, yeah, around eighty four. Yeah. What was the atmosphere like in Jim Crockett Promotions in the mid eighties for you know an, an undercard guy, an enhancement guy? What was the attitude like in the locker room? Talk a little bit about just the overall environment of working there in the mid eighties. Man, it was. I don't know for some guys, for us, I mean, there was nobody I didn't meet as, that I couldn't talk to or I'd become friends with. So the actual fear for us was that, you know, it didn't matter if he was sitting in that corner and he was being a snob, he was going to talk to me. You know, he was going to make a friend, and either going to be a friend when I left him or he wasn't going to be a friend. And, and that's the attitude we had. My other attitude I had, I had a thing, my own mind, that I was changing the rest of the world. I went from all this off the mat and 
some top rope to off top rope. You know, I, I was here in this world to change it, and uh, that's what I wanted to do. I mean, I didn't care about winning or losing. It wasn't thing about that. I love wrestling. I'm a biggest. I'm still a big fan. You know, uh, I watch wrestling every Monday night, Thursday night. I'm still a fan. I'm not no. I, I don't feel like I'm a legend. I don't feel like I'm a, a superstar. I've done something that I wanted to do, and I love doing it. Well, well same I way. mean, uh, my part. I'm, uh, as far as the old school, I'm still a wrestling fan of the old school. The new school, I'm not a fan. I don't watch it. If I turn it over there, if it's on five minutes, you're very lucky because it goes to another channel. To me, that's not what I grew up with, and that's not what I was involved in. When they took all the fun out of uh, being part of the uh, the wrestling crew and everything. That's when I, I pretty well backed away and backed out of it because it took the fun away. It wasn't fun anymore. It was like a, a hat to the man. You're going to do it this way or you're not going to do it at all. And I said, well, I'm going to do it at all. What was the protocol for booking of the enhancement guys and as far as making the matches, like uh, as far as who you were paired up with on any given night? We didn't know. We did not know. We did know if the Road Warriors was on the card, we was going against the Road Warriors. Or the Midnight Express. Or the Midnight Express, because the Road Warriors was not going on TV after a couple of mishaps with some other uh, workers and everything. They were not going on TV. They weren't going on w, uh, uh, TBS yeah. over there unless they went against us. And uh, after that, that's when we started climbing and started getting more 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 involved in, in the house matches and, and more TV. Well, also. you sit back and uh, laugh because uh, the Midnight Express and, and Rock and Roll Express, Rock and Roll Express, the Road Warriors. I mean, they all be fussing and Tully fighting. Tully and Arn. Uh, be they, fighting. Well, oh, no, we doing brass and this week. No, we are. No, we are. You know, yeah. so, I mean, it was a thrill set to watch who, who going to get the best part of who's going to wrestle us on TV that night. Yeah. You know, us, it didn't matter. I mean, we, we was there to do what we wanted to do. Uh, we were very lucky, very fortunate. You know, we can only give a few hands to the people that trained us, but we picked this up now. Yeah. I've been going there since I was a grasshopper, uh, needed to a grasshopper. My grandmother's sister had uh, ringside seat Greenville, Asheville, Anderson, Spartanburg. 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 I mean, we went, we went wrestling every night somewhere. And uh, so it was just something uh, my biggest thrill, I got to do the Great American Bash at the Green World Tour the first time. Mm -hmm. So yeah. got proud. Uh, Dennis Condor didn't show up. And uh, I wrestled Taya Stagg first match. So that biggest dream of my life, you know. A lot of people said dreams don't come true. It comes true. So. Uh, memories of working with the Road Warriors. Oh, God. The worst part was when they come back from Japan. <laughs> <laughs> Took them a little while to lock up a little bit. Yes. The only good thing about myself, I can speak for myself, I'm light off my feet. You know, all I got to do is feel the wind, I'm gone. I'm always protecting myself. If you don't protect your own self, then, you know, it was always, you saw people getting hurt. But if you were the quick enough pit person off, the, uh, off your feet, they're going to take your head, slam off, coming back to paint. You had to pay attention. Yeah. You know, and, and you blindfold me and put me in the ring, and I can tell you every corner on me. I ever inch up because that's that's what I practice on. You know, I can I can count my footsteps from one corner to the next and, and be able to put myself in a position that nobody else can. If I ask you out, I'll be a witness to this. He does the best wrestling the ghost that I ever seen in my life. You would swear that somebody's actually beating him to death and throwing him from one side to the other and it's all him by itself, he's wrestling the ghost. And uh that's where we got our, which our train. We trained each other. We started out in the backyard. We had an old platform that the old utility building was on. It was just a little found, wooden foundation. That was our rational ring, which to put up with, with a hose pipe, with a hose pipe around it. And that's where we started, the backyard. When we was as uh, young as Randall's uh, small boy there. Well, probably younger, four, around four or five years old, because we rode up into it. And had to have a whole neighborhood come and watch us. Where did, is that where the, Everyone that, that thinks about the Mulkies, you think about just the dramatic, incredible bumps where it looks like you guys are dying. Where did that come from? Did that come from working in the backyard? Backyard, or? off the top of the house, or <laughs> off the ladder. Well, we've done ladder matches before they ever thought about ladder matches. Back when we was younger, and that's where all, 
Actually, him, he got dropped on the head too many times, and that's the reason he'd done some of the crazy bumps that he did. I used to take pine needles and pile them up and do a flip off, off the side of the house, laying on my back, just to prove I could do it. I was so enthused on uh, stunt man, wanting to be a stunt man, and this was the next best thing. This was my my call. You know, uh, uh, first time I went to, uh, over and wrestled the Midnight Express, I used to thump them on the nose, take them to the announce desk, thump them on the nose. I said, oh, no, no, no. We ain't doing this. Let's do this. Uh, to Bobby, I said, Sue flexed me on, on the concrete floor. Wham! Wow. Man, everybody in there, it sounded off. Next thing I know, I started taking TV cameras out. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it was an art that I wanted to form, and I didn't care if they put me over the top or not because I was there to do a style of wrestling that nobody else saw. And that was take the biggest whooping and the awesomest falls that anybody could take. And still do it today. But don't get up I, quite as fast. I don't get up quite as fast and I ain't as quite as fast as I was back then. But you know, I love doing what I'm doing. And I wouldn't change nothing if I had to go back and do over. I wouldn't change nothing. But when we start That's our legends. I mean, I'm still fans of them. That's right. You know, that's my, I'm still, my idols are still out there. You know, ain't nothing that I've done except what I, how I put them over. And, that, and that's what I went in there to do. I didn't go in there to be a superstar. I know that I was small. You know, didn't have the body built. I went in there to take the buckle. And, and I can honestly say, you know, knock on wood, I've done the best of anybody could ever do. We took the best butt whoopers they'd ever give out. You know. But we was always back next week for more. That's right. I think that's really where kind of the, the cult following for the Mulkey sort of came from because you guys were out there dying every week. But the next Saturday, you know, there you were again. We never gave up. Yeah, I guess that was the fan <laughs> feel on that part because no matter what we took this hour, the next hour we were back there taking something else for somebody else. We never gave up. And it was just a, that, that kind of be, what do you say, the underdog uh, uh, draw of the fans and, and everything was because, well, Maybe sooner or later they're going to luck up, you know, or, or I just can't believe it. See what he's going to take this week and come back next week from. And that was just the, the simple thing. I mean, I didn't do quite as many of the crazy bumps as he did because uh, the car accident kind of uh, stopped a lot of the crazy bumps and all. But I've done some pretty good bumps and all myself and broken arm, broken jaw, broken nose, fingers. I ain't never been hurt. Not one time. I can honestly say I ain't. It's never been, hurt has never been my part, you know. It's always no pain, no gain, you mm -hmm. know. <laughs> and that's what Not then you didn't But hurt. the thing about us, and, and compared to the rest of the guys, we kept it in the heart. We didn't let our heads swell up. It didn't bother us none, you know. You can call me the biggest loser you want, but I was doing what I loved. So, I, I, I actually loved doing what I'd done. And if I had to do over today, I'd go back and do the same thing. Well, just like the ones buying change. the tickets, just like the ones buying the tickets out there. The thing about it is, we didn't pay them to come watch us get our butt whooped. They paid to see us get our butt whooped. That's right. So that's what we was there for. And you know, it didn't make no difference if we won or lose. It. We was there. And our biggest dream, we always said, if we can ever wrestle one time in the Greenville Memorial Oratory, because that was like the the biggest place we bet we went and on when we was kids, you know, watching the wrestling and all. If we can wrestle one time in the Greenville Moratorium, we made our life go. But we've done better than that. We went all the way. We done we done Anderson the Recreation Center before it was tore down. Yep. Uh main event against the Midnight Express. We draw the biggest uh -huh. wrestling card in a uh, Coleman uh in Anderson, the Coleman Recreation Center that's ever been drawn. Had them standing on ladders looking in. Uh, memories, uh, memories of working with the Midnight Express. Man, that so, should be no better. Man, I mean, better. there's none that we can bring up to speak. Uh, Jim Cornette, Bobby, Dennis, and Stan, you know, uh, as the change went. Two finest guys that we ever brought before. And, and, all of and, and Jim Cornette. Jim Cornette is the reason Mulkamania lives. He's the one that spoke it. When he spoke it, it just kept on just climbing, climbing, climbing. So. We, we owe the multi-mania from uh, Jim Cornette. Well, we, uh, we owe a lot of our wrestling part from uh, from Jim Cornette. Yes. Uh, we helped him be a bubble. When bubble come out, I, I was going to ask about that. 
I was going to ask about that. Uh, uh, memories of well, we might be jumping me- in. Memories, you might be, uh, uh, you're getting us started in. By all means, uh, memories of the injury angle you did with Bubba, which I think would have been around August of 86. Yeah, I mean, it was just uh, Ray Trailer. Uh, we remember when he coming over, you know, and doing the same thing, PBS. He was an enhancement guy. Yeah, that's right. About two that, weeks. That picked up, yeah. And, well, and he got his truck stowed up. Remember when they stowed his truck, truck blow his truck up because he was a guard there. When, uh, when the inmate stowed his truck out of the TBS off, uh, studios there and blowed it up. Yeah. Shot it up, blowed it up. Sure did. They found yeah. out he was, when he was over there the second week, I think it was, he was over there. One that he that was an inmate at the uh, Correctional Institute was out, and he found out, he found his automobile, and he stole it. And right it out of TBS, dude. Right out of the apartment. <laughs> and, and after that, it just seemed like things climbed. They, you know, had a spot for him and opened up as a big bubba. And, uh, man, he went on. The urban big boss man. The urban legend goes he actually wrestled Bobby and Dennis on Saturday morning and started as Bubba that Saturday that night. That Saturday night. night. That's really? the, the urban it, legend. Got on the airplane. Got on the airplane, airplane went and went, went to... Uh, Baltimore or Greensboro, I think. Greensboro well, somewhere. Flew to Greensboro and was their uh, Air Force bodyguard that night and everything. And then they built that, you know, then the Great American Bash coming, they built that feud between him and Dusty at the Great American Bash that, that same year. But, uh, yeah, we can tell you some crazy stories. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. um, I guess, kind of work in, like you said, Bulky Mania. Um, what were the circumstances that led to you guys doing the 87 Crockett Cup? We didn't know. We flew up from Tampa. They had us in, uh, uh, we was in the Tampa office down there. Took us down there. And we was working, traveling around Florida there. Next thing we know, we ain't been to Atlanta probably a couple months after, a couple months or so. And on Next thing we know, Tuesday. we called, they told us that Tuesday, well, y'all going to Atlanta Tuesday morning. Well, our ticket was there Tuesday when we got done with the right. tapping down there. That's right. right. So we Tuesday. flew out, we flew out of Atlanta that, that Saturday morning, went up there. And uh, my little brother, our other little brother lived in Atlanta. He picked us up. And we had no idea. We had no idea what was going to take place or anything. All the other guys down in Florida had ribbed us, some of the uh, Scott Hall and some of them. So y'all guys are going to Crockett Cup and going to win the Crockett Cup. They just tell the ribbed us. All. I said, yeah, right. And then when we got the tickets that Tuesday, and then we left that Saturday morning uh, from Tampa going to uh, – Atlanta, and then like you said, our other brother picked us up, and when we got over there, man, it was a total blast. It was just well, we still didn't know till it was almost no. time, match time. Well, we didn't even there. see George South and Gary Roy. We saw them about two or three minutes, and, and next thing we know, they disappeared. Well, God, it was getting right there at our time to go on. And Dusty pulled us in the room. So, well, this is what we're going to do. Nobody knows it, but Gary, George, me, Ram, and Dusty. The referee didn't know it, no TV commentator. Nobody knew what was Tell happening. That and then all of a sudden there, that's where the big hoopla was. Everybody was just like, hey, what just happened? And that was part of what we, we was to do. Hey, what happened here? You know, and that, that's where the, the strange interview come afterwards, you know. Huh? Uh, I think he said, uh, <laughs> what happened? You said, I think we won. I believe what it was, something like that on one of the interviews. And I was, yeah. And, and after that, man, it just rose. We went to the Crockett Cup. We went out in that first uh, first match on the first night. Uh, a lot of the Hulk, Hulkamania uh, wrestling fans had their Hulkamania signs, but they had Hulk slashed out and had Mulkey across the top of it. And that was really fascinating. It was just, it was just unbelievable. Unreal. Unbelievable. And, and that's our highlights. <laughs> I mean, if nothing else, if nobody ever remembers anything else, that's going to be our highlights to yeah. ourselves. Yeah. You know, it must be that we took at TBS and then go back and, and get our one win on TBS. It's priceless. Yeah. That, was our, that was our last win and our last butt whooping on TBS, too. Yeah, we never went back to TBS. We done some more to Carolina taping, but we never went back to TBS. No, because that was national, and those Carolina tapings and everything, and we said, we said after that we didn't want to be just totally squashed away anymore and they put us over one time and everything. That was our goal. We didn't want to go back to TV yet because that was national. And uh, I guess that, the roar, when we come out and seen the signs and the explosion that went on in uh, Baltimore during the Crockett Cup, I guess it's just the, 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 un, the best feeling that I guess I've ever had in my life. It was like the roar was like standing inside a jet engine 
when we hit the curb. The place exploded. And it went on from there. And that was the highlight, I guess the highlight, the best, the biggest part and the biggest highlight of my life, besides the Green Memorial Tour and being in the Green Memorial Tour and standing in the wrestling ring, I guess those two is my highlights of wrestling. Mine is <coughs> we gave the Road Warriors the uh the man on the shoulder, flipping backwards with the clothesline. <laughs> was sitting in there, was going to ride some one day over to TBS, and I said, hey, I got a good finish move for y'all again. He said, uh, what is it? I said, well, pick me up on your shoulder and hit me with a clothesline, I'll do a full 160 and land on my face. Oh. They talked about it. They said, are you sure you can do this? I said, I'm absolutely They looked at me, I said, yeah, you'll do it. Absolutely positive, man. I said, next thing we know, here's the finish move. This is their finishing move, you know. But that's my thing. I mean, I'm, I I didn't come, come into wrestling to be a superstar. I come into wrestling to be the best fall guy, bump taker there ever was. And, and to this day now, to this day now, you know, I'm not big headed. I'm not let it swell to my head. I still have it in my heart, but I done what I set out to do. I changed. And not, not, not to cut anybody down or anything like that, but still out bump the best one out there. Any day. Any day. What did that match, the Crockett Cup, and, and the win on TBS followed right by the Crockett Cup, what did that match do for, for your lives and, and your careers from that point on? Well, basically, it, is, it's, it was still the same. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't a career move. It wasn't a major payday or anything mm -hmm. for us. It was just another day, another job that we done. But we got a lot of recognition off of that. A lot of recognition. You know, a lot of recognition. You know, people that didn't really know us and everything say, uh, they say, ha <laughs> we seen you Saturday, we seen you get your butt kicked, such such kick your butt and all that. And then after that it was like, hey man, I seen y'all on television, man, that was super, you guys go. You know, and it was just, it built from there, you know. But I know we got a lot of slack. I know there's a lot of things on, on the internet and all that, that I've been reading and all that stuff. We get a lot of a lot of slack because we went up there and, and, and got our butt kicked. But yeah, we didn't write them things and put on the uh, the internet either. If if you were so, if the ones who wrote that stuff and put it on the internet and everything, it, it, it's so concerned in that that we were such low lives and, and the scum of the earth that we got our butts beat and everything. 30 seconds, I'll give them 30 seconds in the ring with any one of the guys in the Legend Series and everything. They won't go back and punch no more ridicule and everything on the internet about nobody else. Because this is our life, this was our life at that time. I mean, you know, uh, this, this, I mean, you know, everybody, you know, wrestling's fake. Okay, that's what you want to call it, you know? How did Jim Crockett promotions change over time, over the time that you were there? Like changes in the office and the attitude. You know, you alluded to to wrestling nowadays not really being fun anymore. What was was there any changes in the attitude of the company or of the boys in the time that you were there? Well, all the way up to TBS, I, I stayed. Uh, I think I wrestled about two months, three months after Ted Turner come in. He was ready to go. So they, you, you was pretty well hurt then. They took it over in January. I wrestled in Greenville in February. And yeah, well, I was living in Florida yeah. at the time you and were out there. It went to being uh, us doing the man coming telling us, okay, this is what we're doing, this is our finish. We're going to have 15, 20 minutes, you know, or this is what we're doing on TV. We're just going out here, this is a finish move, you know. Don't swing, don't do this, don't do that, to too much showbiz. You were seeing what you saw on TV, you were seeing in the auditorium. And it was too much arguing and fussing going on in the office part there. That just took the fun. It was the same thing on TV as it was in the arena. So yeah, I mean, it was just getting where even the people, the fans were recognizing. Yeah. You know, what's happening with this? God, this is the same thing I seen on TV yesterday. Yeah. Or, you know, it's the same basic identical match. It got to be a, what do you say, it got to be more 
uh, uh, instead Show of a, 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 a wrestling physical entertainment as far as old school wrestling to a, uh, I don't know what you said, a choreographed dance is what it ended up being. And it was like that if you went to, uh, if you was in Columbia tonight, and then you was in Greensboro tomorrow night, you do the same thing from the start, same thing to the finish in both towns, and then they're there, just a little run, run out, and then they come up with another deal, and then run, and it got to be unfun. I mean, it wasn't, uh, I don't know, it took the thrill and, and the ambition of uh, doing the crazy thing. Well, guess, you know? take an example of the Midnight and Rock and Roll. You know, they wrestled every night for two or three months together. Same match. But it wasn't the same match. It might be the same finish, but it wasn't the same match. Yeah. You know, it was still different. How you got there was different. Yeah, right? it was different. You know, but it was still the same, more or less, what was going on. Oh, Whoever had the boat, a belts was going to get screwed at this one, or who didn't have the belts, you know, just that. But it was getting there was the same, but the beginning wasn't. You know, it was totally different. But they would add in their same routines over, but it would come at the same time, you know, the way they was, seemed like it was they was wanting it to do. You do this tonight, and we're going to do this the same thing. You take each step as we go. Uh, I'm done with that. You know, I, I don't want no part of that. Well, I guess when I went, when I went, uh, uh, down hard with it. We was on the Florida circuit. As a matter of fact, I stayed on the Florida circuit for uh, probably about uh, five, six months. And Randy left him down on the Florida circuit. Uh, uh, and they just about uh, basically what you say, run the Florida circuit in the ground. Uh, they come down there with all big intentions and all these big shows and all this and everything. And, and I, I'll tell you the honest truth and be straight up with you and everything. Our deal was we're gonna send you to Florida. We're going to give you some top-notch ring experience. Month and a half, we're going to drop the Florida straps on you guys. We're going to build you guys up. We're going to bring you back to the Carolinas, and we're going to rock and roll with you. Well, I was there for a year and a half and never seen the first title match. We was always against the ones that was coming in to take the titles, to put them over, to make them look good, to take the titles, but we never seen the title match. And, and, and the promises and, and uh, everything that was made didn't live up to the promises that was made. They just basically, when it got time, they was gonna shut the territory down. They just like shut the door. Hey, see you, high and dry. Hey, what about helping us get back home, move back home? Hey, I can't help you. And after that, I thought, hey, you know, as much as we've done, and as far as many miles that we traveled, if they didn't think no more of us than that, then I was done. I worked a few more shows. That's when Kevin uh, Sullivan was calling the shots. Kevin gave me some good spots. I've done a few, several shows and everything. Well, three or four months there with Kevin and some of the guys that was left down there trying, but it was, he was, he was beating your head against the wall. The, when you go to one town, the big show was in the next town, you know, and it was just completely just drove it down. And then after that, I just said, no more done with it. I've done a few little uh, independent spot shots here, there, and yonder. Uh, some of the guys, I ain't got tired of doing that uh, because they had such unexperienced guys in the little organizations they had, they was hurting everybody. I mean, I didn't want to go in there with somebody that was so uh, less experienced and hurt myself or him hurt me, made me hurt myself. And I just got tired of that. And I said, man, ain't no use. You bang your head against the wall. And then it got too commercialized. And when it went that, I said, Psh, I'm done with that. You guys were in there. In, in the Jim Crockett territory <coughs> with pretty much all the major stars, all the top guys. Was there anyone that came through the territory that you really thought, as a worker, you really thought would have or should have been a top guy that never made it or never made it as far as you thought he would have or should have been? Yeah, he's a bunch of us. Rocky King, George Sire, uh, us, you know, Mike Smiley, Mike Smiley, uh, Vernon D. I mean, there's a lot of us. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of us got a lot of blood and sweat and tears out of it. Uh, Vernon Deacon broke leg, you know. Broke uh, arm. They were bringing some guys in that that been trained just a few weeks and bring them in, put them on top. Yeah. And, and probably one of the best one they ever brought in was T. Joe Cohen. T. Yeah. Joe, I mean, he he picked up. You know, he, you could tell he was still green, but he picked up more. More he done with us, more he picked up. I mean, he was just. He had the mind for it. He didn't let it swell his head. He kept it. He you know, stride. He was good. 
Uh, he's got a scar. When you ask, ask him about the scar that Monkey's chin give him in the forehead, he's got a scar in his forehead, and I got one in my chin right here. We went for a double cross body block one night. And he caught my he caught his head under my chin. <laughs> and uh, he was West uh, Palm. Yeah, West Palm Beach. He was he was tagging with uh, one of the mod squad, Jim Jeffers. Jim Jeffers. And uh, he was tagging with him, and then. T. Joe just got up and it just lit him up because the, the blood was flowing. And he tagged Jim in, Jim picked me up. And when he picked me up, he just looked down and he could see all the way to the roof of my mouth and my chin was gashed open. And he just picked me up and laid me down and covered me. And then when he slid me out, down to carry me over to the emergency room. When we went to the emergency room within 20 minutes, we were back to the And uh, But T. Joe, yeah, he was, a, he was one of the best. My squad team? My squad, they were sick. They were super too. Yeah, they were super. They, that's another two home boys that was from our hometown. Yeah, that come through the ranks like Jim Jeffers, Jeffers and my yeah. squad. Uh, there's another two. They should have been there too. Yeah, they should have been. A lot of the guys that should have been on top got uh, got a little bit of recognition, and they were slapped to the bottom, you know, and just kind of cast away. A lot of them was because they sent George South and Rocky King out to Kansas City, Kansas City. destroyed the territory out there, and then when. They come back, all those guys out there was, was striving. They were starving to death, man. They were killing themselves or for nothing. It was like we did in Florida. Conversely to that, were there any <coughs> guys that were, that were in top spots that, that you guys didn't think deserved them, that you guys didn't think should be there, they were green, they weren't, you know, weren't good in the ring, whatever? Not so much uh, green. I, they, they won in particular. I mean, uh, I mean, you got God rest his soul. Lex Luger. Should have never been a top contender. He was the most non-working wrestler in the business. I mean, that's my. I, I mean, when he come in the dressing room, he throw his bags down, he shoved your stuff out of the way. He thought this area is mine. Don't infringe my area. He had an arrogance, a cocky attitude, and he was it. Stay away from me, you know. And that, that, see, like that. When you try to talk to somebody like that, a couple times, you know, it's like you know. Hey, baby. You know? That's it. But Lex Luger, I have to say, I don't know if Randy's got a pick or not. Uh -huh. Lex Luger was mine. If anybody should have been on, not been on top, he should have been a job guy. That's what he should have been. He should have been a job guy. Well, it's like me and Randy, George South, Vernon Deaton, uh, all those guys. Uh, Royal. Gary Royal. Gary Royal. He Roy. should have been jobbing for, the, uh, for those guys instead of us jobbing for him because. To me, he was the most less worker of anybody that I've ever seen in the business that I, I come in contact with. I don't have no problem with none of them. <coughs> I didn't have no problem with none of them. I, I mean, I, it was it was more or less uh, being light off your feet. Yeah. You know they're green, so I mean, it, there's no need going out there and letting them hurt yourself. Right. Less, lighter off your feet you was, better off you was. You know, it's... This business is crazy. Yeah, yeah. It, it is crazy. crazy. It always is. I mean, uh, there's nobody that loves this business no more than us two. And for us to walk away, it was heartbreaking. But it's also it talk about life. talk about what what led you to kind of walking away from the business, and also what you've been doing, you know, since then. Since well, you let me clarify one thing. Mm -hmm. Don't take it that I dislike Lex Luger. Right. But I disliked his arrogance in his way. I mean, as far as his way, Lex Luger was a great guy. I mean, you know, I guess. But you, I never got close enough to him. And to me, that's the one that stands out like a red flag, mm -hmm. if anybody was to ask me. that. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just my point of view. I didn't dislike the guy, and I, I wouldn't say anything bad about the guy. But no, I didn't think he should have been a top contender. But I'm sorry to interrupt. No, no, by all means. But that's fine. Uh, uh, me, when I walked away, I had a family to raise. I, I got a 23-year-old that's finished uh, uh, up a university in Atlanta as a mortician. I uh, got an 18-year-old uh, at home that just finished playing ball that, uh, that works with me now, and my nine-year-old. You know, my kids come before anything else. Part of life is kids. You know, I enjoy life waking up every day knowing that I can provide for my youngest. That's basically it. Uh, survival. I mean, you know. What led to you leaving the business? Uh, basically, it, just what I said a while ago. You know, uh, what, what we built up to a while ago, it got to be to where, you know, they just left you high and dry. And 
And I just got, you know, like I said, I got the feeling like, if they didn't think no more about us than that, you know, I'm done. And it, I had to start looking out for myself then, you know, but it, the reality kicked in. Hey, you got to go to the real job now. It's no more fun and games. You start working and, and providing. Then I, I got married and, and had a child also, and, and uh, I had to provide too. And so it just went on and escalated from there. Absolute favorite guys to work with. Road Warriors, Midnight Express, Rock and Roll Express, uh, Rick Flair, uh, Ivan Koloff, Crusher Khrushchev, Arn and Tully. Arn and Tully. Uh, I mean, you name Our it. favorites was all of them, really. Right. I mean, yeah, we, we did. I mean, I, I sat and watched before we done this, I sat and watched every move they made, and I could predict every, every step they was going to make in that ring just well. by their body language. Magnum TA, you know. Any least favorite guys to work with? Nope. No, didn't have no least. Nope. This favorite? Nope. We had a ball out of We made them all look good. Any any favorite stories from the road or good rib stories that you saw during your run? Well, uh, road warriors. <laughs> I mean, what can you say about them? They, they was... We was coming out of Fayetteville, North Carolina one night and they was having a police escort all the way out of town. Hmm. Uh, it's, it's just from one town to the next. It, it's according to who was the bad guys that night to the next. Bobby, he's the most, I guess, the most funniest character they are in, in the dressing room before it's time to put the Game face. He's so quiet in front of the so camera, quiet. you never know it. Yeah, you never know it, but you get him in here. Oh, I mean, it's just, I mean, it, it's everyday life. You know, you had to make the best of what you was doing. And have fun doing it. Yeah. Hey, I tell you, I keep it good. We was in uh, Jacksonville uh, Auditorium, Danny Miller, uh, which uh, Bubba and uh, uh, all of them. They always targeted Randy all the time. So, you know, Danny smoked. So Randy, Randy was out there, he done went in and put his britches on and everything. And they always knew Randy kept his lighter, kept his lighter in his pocket so he could flip it right, right out. Well, his lighter didn't flip out when he flipped it out. And Danny said, hey, bud, I might give me a light. And Randy stuck his hand down his pocket. When he come out, he come out with a can, a slap full of shaving lotion that they filled up his pocket. He didn't know it till he reached in there and it was like, How about the rest of underwear? Well, I ain't got that for you. <laughs> <laughs> West Palm Beach. Uh, the uh, Mod Squad. And all, Bubba. And Bubba and all them. They was all in one vehicle. And me and Randy was in ours with uh, uh, Ron, uh, Ron, Simmons. Ron Simmons and Tracy, Tracy Smothers. Tracy Smothers and all. Well, we got down there, went in, and Randy, Never hardly ever, you know, I mean, well, you know, he never would hardly, when we was going to matches, he never would wear uh, no underwear because he put on his uh, trunk liner and then his trunks most of the time. And so he'd throw his blue jeans, just drop them down. So while he was in the shower and we got done working, they went over there and filled his blue jeans full of Listerine. He got out of the shower, throwed his britches on, Walked out to the door while the matches was going on. He got bouncing around there. And uh, I was on fire, boy. He started bouncing around there and everything. And he said, uh, Them SOBs. I said, What? He said, I don't know. He said, But I'm on fire. He went in there and pulled his blue jeans off and everything. He got to smell them and list the ring. They was dying. So, they was all fixing to do a match and everything, so me and Randy slips out. And old Gordon, he put up the ring down in Florida. He had a quart of motor oil, burnt motor oil. It already been drained out. And he took that quart of motor oil and he covered the windshield, side windows, back windows, and everything. Well, the next day, it's by the car washes and all that. They like to never made it home. Cause they never could <laughs> sell. So that's one of the, the tricks, that's one of the things. But the next time they got us, because they stopped at the store and bought about 10 dozen eggs, and all of a sudden they pulled up the side of the van, the door flies open, and eggs went everywhere. 
and we looked like we went through a roost farm and everything. That was no. I mean, it was, a, it was fun, fun games. Nothing to hurt nobody. Uh, it was just, have a good time. Joe, high school game. Grown men doing high school games. I guess it made everybody feel younger than me. Um, go do a little word association, just a name, and you give us just a couple of words, <laughs> one sentence, your thought on them as a person or as a worker or whatever. Dusty Rhodes. Wonderful. Good boss. Ric Flair. Nobody's no better. To me, to beat a man, you got to beat the man, and I ain't never seen nobody beat the man. Tully Blanchard. No, super for person. Jim Cornette. Oh, number the one greatest. Right? The number one. You put him in the camera, he got, he's a talking encyclopedia. Yeah. Uh, the Midnight Express. All three. Man, sure. awesome. Oh, uh, Stan, uh, Dennis, Bobby. You couldn't ask for no smoother. Uh, workers that uh, when you've done a house shop besides TV that would actually work you and make you look like a superstar along with them before a finish was given you. What, was there either group you preferred working with over the right. other? Bobby and Dennis or Bobby and Stan? No. Uh, the Road Warriors. Oh, boy. Peace Cat. Mountains. <laughs> 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 Mountain cake. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Valiant. Oh, if you didn't keep your eyes open and pay attention to what was happening, got a tongue under your throat. <laughs> you get a tongue stuck down your throat. <laughs> he still like that. So. Oh, he still say what? The march to the ring was always the longest than what the match was. It was da 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 But if you didn't watch him, what he was doing, you would never know he'd even touch you or been near you and everything. And he doesn't tag, I mean, they didn't raise his hand. He walked out of the ring. And if you just didn't pay no attention and everything, you'd still be standing there because you never know what happened. He just, when he, it was like a feather brushing against you. It's like air just rushing over you. That's, that's how smooth he was, you know. Arn Anderson. Super. To me, he was the top guy jobber because he'd done most of the jobs for everybody else. When he was yes. just, he was just the top guy job. Yeah. And he was the best worker. He was top star. He was top star with the job. Yeah. Because he took all the butt whoopings for every who it was his tag team partner. When it came time for Dusty to win the TV title or something that would go to Arn and then go to Dusty. That or either tell either one. Right. But Arn took Arn was the best top man of jobber that I can say. I just love to watch Arn work. I love watching Arn work. He had he didn't get a lot of recognition that he should got do. He did. Ole Anderson. Oh, what a wonderful old man. Yes, sir. Man, you talk about a light man in the ring, he was a If he liked you, you know. Now, but he also come from the old school. He'd take and spit uh, you out. he spit you out, too. If you, uh, same thing with Dick Murdoch. Uh, some of them older guys and everything you get in there, when they put you in the headlock, you was in the headlock. Ray Trailer. Bubba. Man, what a best guy. Friend. I even went and I went and done some uh, job shows and everything at WWF when uh, he was the big boss man. And as soon as he seen me come through the door, he was running and everything. I got my match tonight. He was telling uh, Chief and all of them there and everything. He said, for the next three nights, that's who I want, you know. Uh, super. I mean, he was just, it's a super guy, super friend. Uh, I really, I really miss him too. George South. Oh, hey, sir. there's another one that should be a superstar today. Yeah. That's the one that should have been on top a long time ago. Yeah. The Italian Stallion. He was another good guy to work with. Yeah. Uh, like I said, he's the one I've done my Great American Bash show. Yeah, the was. With. And, and he was another light. Not <laughs> arrogant, but he was just plain spoken. You know, he was there to do a job, too. Uh, wonderful person. Jim Crockett. Jim Crockett, we didn't have a lot of connection, but spoke to him a little bit. So, in passing, in passing, we, you know, don't know enough to even speak to say anything. Again, star. Um, uh, J.J. Dillon, super, super guy, super, super, super guy. Uh, he was one that that really started. He's the one that brought us to 
Carolina TV asked us what we'd like to do to Carolina yeah, TV yeah. and then started booking us on house shows and everything. Yeah. So JJ, well, like really wanted to give us a break. You know, yeah. he's the one that really put us, started putting us out there in the house shows and everything in the Carolinas. And, and he really gave us, gave us a thing. Uh, what are your memories of, of the actual match with the Gladiators, the match that kind of led to, to Malky Mania? Truthfully, it went so quick. Yeah. All we knew it was going to be two or three minutes. Uh, he was going to pick me up. He was going to trip over Bill. We were going to cover him one, two, three, and it was going to be in and out. We were supposed to be the biggest surprise there ever was. Well, they throwed Randy out, and then he was coming in. He was going to take him, pick him up, and suplex him over. While the other one had kicked me or something or other. I can't remember exactly how it went, but anyway, I rolled to up behind him where he stepped back and ran to come over at one, two, three. The referee uh, didn't even know this was going to happen. When he got the one, two, and then he didn't have no other choice and everything, he couldn't wait no longer, you know. I mean, his guy was flat, and he didn't even know it. So they had that hesitation between the two and the three. Uh, Scrappy didn't even know that this was going on and everything. And when it Well, did, we don't really know if he knows or not. You know, truthfully, I mean, that could have been. As far as I know, as far as we know, they didn't. There was only five of us that knew. It was Dusty, George, me and Randy, and uh, uh, Dusty. Gary. Yeah, it, Dusty. To your knowledge, was it always the plan to to put you guys in the Crockett Cup like that, or was it something that came on at the last something minute? Or? The last minute. I mean, we did not know till that day. Till that we didn't day. know that Tuesday. That we, well, we didn't know we were going to be in the Crockett Cup until no, next Saturday. We, we got there. But see, all the guys was ribbing us. We had kind of an idea. We didn't know uh, precisely if it was or they were just or the, the ribbing BS. us. You know, BSing us and stuff. Until we got there on Saturday morning, we really, really didn't know. What, you know, that whole experience, the Crockett Cup was, was really, before pay-per-view, that was really the number two big event next to like Starcade and, mm -hmm. and maybe the Bash. Right. You know, you talked about the ovation and the crowd and, and everything. What was that whole experience like as far as being, you know, a part of that? Somebody that didn't really get many chances to be part of the big, big shows and who you were at the Crockett Cup and, and one of the acts that everybody came to see that night. Uh, it, it was it was bigger than what we expected. Yeah. We arrived in Baltimore that, that Saturday. Was it that Friday? Friday evening. That Friday evening. And when we got off the airport, oh, Lord. We I mean, no it, they, they was there. And we had no idea it was that big or it had reached a fan base like that way because it was in the park, uh, in the uh, airport like that way. And then when we come out of the curtains, that's what it really was. And it, it really hit reality then. Yeah. And, and I turned around to Bill, I said, no mistakes. It don't matter if, if there's no mistakes. We never did make no mistakes. No. No, ever no mistake. I mean, it's such a it's such a part of, of wrestling, you know, folklore. When the Mulkies finally won, you know, um, there are people on the internet that think it was the Road Warriors under the mask. Oh, uh, have you guys ever heard that? Man, we I mean we've been asked all kinds okay, of things. Man. They first they said it was the Road Warriors. Then they said it was Bobby and Stan. Uh, they never picked the two right person, Gary Lloyd no. and George Sykes. No, they never did. Never well, all did. the until this day, right now, somebody. We'll Just sit and argue with you. If you tell them it's George South and Gary Roll, no way. No way. But they'll sit and argue with you. But, you know, uh, we did have a lot of people that said, uh, we did find out that Bobby and Stan did volunteer for it. The Road Warriors even volunteered for it. You know, there was a lot of them that volunteered to do that for us that we didn't know about. Those guys liked us as much as we liked them. Well, they did because they, they argued on who was going to be on TV was that, that week and everything. Those guys, every one of them, I mean, I read some of the articles on, on the websites and all that stuff, how, how you know, they estimated if the Monkeys won the tournament. I know y'all seen that on, on one of the that websites. That odds, yeah. Yeah, that, I mean, it's, it's, oh, man, it's a long thing. I sat and read that thing. I said, this guy doesn't even have a clue. Them guys would not have walked out if they had put us over those guys would have been on the front row chair bars if they had put us over. Every one of them, they said, would probably walk out and cause friction because they wanted to put us over for the cup. Every one of those guys was behind us as much as we was behind them and done what we done for them. Still like JJ, I met tonight. Yeah. And that's David. what it was. That's what it was about for you guys. The respect of your peers right. more so than than being put over on TV or winning belts or whatever. That's right. And every one of these guys know when they put us on TV with them that we would do a hundred. 
and 50%. Right. We, wouldn't, we wouldn't slack off, and, and we are we were more or less a numb state person when we got in the ring with them. So they knew that we was going to be there. We took anything they wanted to do. Even if it was a mess up and, and they, they messed up or whatever, we was going to be there. We was going to cover that up and we was going to take care of it. And we was going to make that bump look absolutely awesome. Any so, uh, any parting thoughts, closing thoughts for uh, fans that remember the Monkey Brothers? Live on, baby. I mean, we done what we wanted to do. You know, our life is complete. You know, we don't we don't strive on wrestling now. We don't strive on the fan base now. We are we are fans. We are who we are. We are who they are. Were you surprised to get the call to come to Fan Fest? Now, what twenty years later? Yeah, I was tickled. tickled. I mean, I was I wasn't so much. I, I felt it to be an honor, and, and just like uh, in, in a closing on, on my part, or anything uh, this comes from, uh, which you know uh, we talked about Hall Strickland earlier, and he passed away. Uh, as a matter of fact, today, three years, uh, and uh, his motto was, and, and he stowed that in my head when he was my pastor and everything before I started into the ministry also, and this thing was keep on keeping on. No matter what comes against you, no matter what the world throws against you or anybody throws against you, as long as you look up, put the Lord first, and keep on keeping on, you will succeed in anything you want to do. That's my closing part is, I am who I am. I have no hard feelings towards anything that I've done. I don't strive on this stardom of wrestling. I've done it to change the wrestling world. I come in this thing to be a jobber, to be the best jobber, and show the bumps that they ain't never saw before. What I've done, part of me, you know, I care less. What anybody else thinks about me, or if I even get in the ring again, or anything else, my kids come first. My family come yeah. first. I love wrestling. I love everybody that gave us the chance to do what we've done. But we fans. We ain't wrestling legends. We ain't superstars. We are fans. Right. We are biggest fans. We probably bigger fans than most of them out there now. You know, to tell you the truth. You know, uh, Ric Flair's my hero. I mean, if I could go and be the age that he is right now and do what he does, man, I'd be awesome. You know, just like I said earlier, the better man got a big man. In my book, I ain't never man. seen nobody without work to man. Hey, and I love everything that all the fans are doing. Yeah, yeah. And we appreciate everything. But we got to give also thanks to JJ, uh, Jim Cornett, Midnight Express, Rock Road Express, The Road Warriors, all of them. Animal, yeah. and Hawk. Yeah. Even Hawk ain't here now, but you know, we got to give him thanks. Because, and the Barbarian, yeah. and Chris Crucia. All done. Without them, I couldn't do the moves that I'd done with the, bit, with the smaller guys. Without the muscle, because I need the muscle to, to, to get Shit. me up. You know, and my life's complete. You know, I love Jim Crop promotion. I love the NWA, yeah. but I'm not a legend. I'm not a superstar. I'm a fan. So. Thank you very much for. Don't give up. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Don't give up. Fight forever. Fight forever and ever and ever and ever. <laughs>